looking at the lumpy 1.3 kilogram pink organ with the consistency of porridge, that is your brain. You may wonder, how does this organ allow me to move my body? Understand and construct language, remember the past and plan for the future, as well as having a conscious understanding of the world around me. Is it all just randomly connected up? Or are there particular areas for each individual functional task that I can perform? In this episode of Psych Boost, localization of function in the brain. Localization of function is the idea that the production of behavioral functions like moving your arm or producing speech are localized to particular regions of the brain. This is in contrast to a holistic understanding of the brain in which functions are spread out across large areas or the entire brain. In this video, we're gonna explore six regions of the brain. These demonstrate localization of function. They are the visual cortex, the motor and somatosensory cortices, the auditory cortex and Broca and Wernicke's areas. The first four are found in both sides of the brain. However, Broca and Wernicke's areas, which deal with producing and understanding language, are generally in the left hemisphere. This is an example of hystemic lateralization. Hystemic lateralization is the left and right hemispheres of the brain have some cognitive functions that are specialized to that side. Broca and Wernicke's areas are the best example of hystematic lateralization of the left hemisphere, with the right hemisphere being dominant in visuospatial functions. A great evaluation shown in hystematic lateralization is Sperry's split brain patients, covered in another video. The visual, motor, and somatosensory cortices are contralateral, meaning that the right hemisphere moves and senses the left side of the body, as well as dealing with visual information from the left visual field of both eyes. And of course, meaning the left hemisphere moves and senses the right side of the body, as well as dealing with the visual information from the right visual field of both eyes. I'm gonna be using the word cortex a lot. It means the thin outside layer of the brain. It's a mass of cell bodies and it's where much of the brain's processing takes place. It's often termed gray matter because it's mostly cell bodies and its axons are unmyelinated. The cortex is between two and four millimeters thick in humans and distinctively folded to give it a greater surface area. White matter, on the other hand, is mostly myelinated axons with few cell bodies, giving it a white appearance. Firstly, the visual cortex. The occipital lobe is the smallest of the four lobes of the brain, alongside the temporal, frontal, and parietal. The occipital lobe is found at the back of the brain. The occipital lobe is known as the visual processing center containing the visual cortex. Damage to the visual cortex, as you might imagine, can cause partial or complete blindness, known as cortical blindness. As the left and right visual cortices are contralateral, damage to one will result in sight loss in the opposite visual field. The motor and somatosensory cortex. These structures run alongside a fold in the brain called the central sulcus. That separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. The motor cortex is found in the frontal lobe and the somatosensory in the parietal. The motor cortex in each hemisphere plans and carries out voluntary motor movements on the opposite side of the body. Damage to one side of the motor cortex can lead to loss of fine muscle function or even paralysis on the opposite side of the body. Somatosensory cortex. The somatosensory cortex in each hemisphere detects sensations from the opposite side of the body. Damage to one side of the somatosensory cortex can lead to the loss of sensation from the opposite side of the body. Somatosensory damage can lead to ignoring areas of the body, known as neglect syndrome, or losing the ability to recognize objects by feeling them, known as agnosia. The auditory cortex. The auditory cortex is located at the top of the temporal lobe on both sides of the brain and receives auditory or sound sensations from the ears. Damage to the auditory cortex can lead to deafness. Closely associated to the auditory cortex in the left hemisphere is Broca's area. Discovered by Paul Broca after the case study of a patient named Louis Lebronia, nicknamed Tan, Tan, despite clearly understanding what was said to him, could only produce the word Tan. The postmortem of Tan's brain showed extensive damage to an area of the brain at the bottom of the left frontal lobe. Along with similar cases and dissections, 
Broca's suggested Broca's area was responsible for speech production. Damage to Broca's area leads to Broca's aphasia, also known as expressive or motor aphasia, difficulty in producing fluent speech. The speech produced is slow and short, requiring significant effort, and is missing words needed for correct grammar. Wernicke's area is also associated with the auditory cortex in the left hemisphere. It's located in the temporal lobe, just next to the auditory cortex. Carl Wernicke found that some patients could produce quick, fluent-sounding speech, but not understand speech. The fluent speech they produced, however, was often strange, making no sense. When these patients had postmortems on their brain, damage was found in what's now called Wernicke's area, the area of the brain used to interpret speech. Damage to Wernicke's area leads to Wernicke's aphasia, also known as receptive or sensory aphasia, a difficulty in understanding written or spoken language and producing speech that, while sounding fluent, lacks meaning. Damage to both Broca and Wernicke's area can lead to a global aphasia, the inability to produce or understand speech. Evaluation of localization of function. Human clinical case study research by Broca and Wernicke as well as case studies like Clive Waring, demonstrate the loss of functional abilities like speech and memory. As brain damage is in particular locations, it suggests that those locations are responsible for those functions. Case study research has its limitations, such as a recent MRI scan of Tan's brain. It showed damage far beyond Broca's area, suggesting other areas could be responsible for Tan's speech problems. Despite this, Broca and Wernicke's areas, responsibility in language processing tasks, and their location in the left hemisphere have been backed up by more modern scientific research using techniques such as fMRI, researchers studying healthy brains while completing language processing tasks. Some functions appear to be more localized than others. While simple motor and somatosensory functions are highly localized, the language system is more distributed and more complex systems like personality and consciousness appear not to be localized at all. Also, due to the complex connection to the brain, it could be argued that as no one part is independent from the rest, no function is completely localized. This debate about holistic or localized nature of functions in the brain has been long lasting. A classic study by Lashley in 1925 is research evidence against localization of function. 50 rats ran a maze and then had different areas and amounts of their brain cortices cut away, and then had to run the maze again. Lashley found that the rat's difficulty in remembering how to run the maze again depended on how much of the brain cortex was removed, not which parts were removed. He suggested the entire brain has equal potentiality. This is, functions are spread out, and healthy areas of the brain can potentially form functions like memory or learning equally well as areas that have been damaged. Bonus fact about hemispheric lateralization. I mentioned that motor and somatosensory cortices run along the side of your brain, map out your body. While different areas of your body take up different amounts of space in those areas, depending on how much sensory and motor information processing is needed. This has been turned into a 3D model of effectively how your mind perceives your body. This is a male sensory homunculus. You may want to pause the video. Look at the various sizes and consider why some areas use so much information and other areas so little. I think the most interesting part of this model is the hands. It really demonstrates how much we depend on them. I hope you found this Psychobrief video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you in your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psychobrief grow, subscribe and like, also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.